Hi, good morning everybody. Welcome to TWR Facebook Live. Uh, I hope that uh, sound and images are clear. Okay, so it seems like uh, it's working. So, uh, greetings to everybody. So this morning uh, we are going to start with the, our webcast with a short meditation. Uh, I will play the Sali Mantra. So please just sit comfortably wherever you are, however you are sitting. Just be aware of your surrounding. your body, your breath, stay your heart open and listen to the Salavaya Mantra and feel connected with the Cyber Sangha. So we are here all together supporting each other. Feel that you are supported by others and also stay your heart open and send your support to others. This active awareness of receiving support and giving support. And if, if you're not able to do that and at least be aware that you are not able to do that or you're not doing it, that awareness will help to do it next time better.
Okay, so welcome again. Uh, so during <clears throat> the practice that I think uh, is always uh, very helpful to um, sense this uh, connection in the Cyber Sangha, I think this, today is the world that we all live in a very isolated lifestyle, even though we are living with the apartment with the hundreds of people and the workplace there are hundreds of people uh, but there's some sense of not necessarily always you feel the connection to people right immediate surrounding so this is definitely uh, using the technology as the sense of a sharing common interests uh, practice and uh, on a regular basis that you're trying to connect with someone, a group that you're practicing together. And if you're, when you're doing that, I think it's important that you really make the best use of it by sending this sense of connect, support to other people with your awareness and also being very open or feeling that you are also supported by all the Cyber Sangha. So this sense of even though we have probably many of us, we have never met each other, but that doesn't mean much. We are in, in cyber sense, we are meeting every week. And this, this meeting encounter, this connection, it's in a way sometimes maybe much more valuable. And I think it's good that we send this sense of support to each other. So I, as I remind every time during the meditation, I think it's a good that trying to feel that connection. Um, so today um, is the third lamp. So the um, the wisdom of awareness clear the darkness of ignorance. The wisdom of awareness the clears the dark of darkness of ignorance. So I will just uh, people who are maybe watching first time here just tell a little bit this context where um, <clears throat> we are teaching from this uh, Shang Jun Yen Ju, uh, 21 nail, the 11th nail, among 11th nail, the four lamps. So we are, we have spoken the first lamp, second lamp, and we are talking about third lamp. So, um, Jangja Chui Domai, Jikte Maki member cell, Hong Tong Nang with Domai, Tongze Loi member cell, Rangri Shi Domai, Marie Loi member cell, Kunji Yingji Domai, Chongzi Loi member cell. So this is the actual line, line, and then among this, basically there's a two line which, uh, which says uh, the, the wisdom of awareness, clear. The darkness of ignorance. So, so we all know that um, in I think in, in in a sense every spiritual tradition uh, there is always this sense of deep in, inside every individual, every one of us there is a wisdom, there is a knowledge, there is awareness there, and if that is not being conscious, not being connected to that, then it does not matter it's there or not. It just is basically, it's not supporting what is there. So we, we know that very, very well. So, so basically, what, what is the challenging that we face in our life, not able to connect with that inner light or inner awareness? This is a, uh, basically a very simple question. What it is that each one of us, you, me, us together, collective, or you look as a sense of community also, that you are part of a community. 
why as a community we struggle to awaken collective awareness, why as a country we struggle to awake a collective awareness, why as a family we struggle, why as a couple we struggle, why as individual we struggle to, to be aware, to, be, to find that inner light, the wisdom awareness. Rangrik Ishi Domai Marik Loi Mimbasel. Why? So, of course, um, the question is very simple, but I think maybe the question is not we ask to each other, I guess, the question we ask to ourselves. Why? I can ask that for myself. Why I'm. Whenever I feel like a little challenge with that, why? Or whenever you feel with that challenge with that, why you feel that? Obviously, the opposite of the Rangri Yishe, the 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 innate awareness, there is in some sense of what we call Hinchichi Maripa, innate ignorance. There is this innate ignorance with, within us. Very simple. You want it, you don't want it, you like it, you don't like it, you are aware of it, you are not aware of it. It does not matter. It is with you. Sometimes, collectively, it is with us. So, sometimes we enter into spiritual community, we enter into deep meditation, long, many years of search and the journey to liberate ourselves from these conditions. But we, as a human being, throughout the history, we get trapped into it. Sometimes, even very high masters get struck into it. Sometimes very intelligent, smart people get stuck into it. Sometimes people run for office with very good, beautiful intentions, a means a social, ecological responsibility keeping that in mind, enter and run for something and, and achieve position, but then get trapped into it. A yogi goes into the cave, leaving everything, not getting attached to the possessions, not getting attached to the families and relationship, going away in the cave, but then in the cave, one get caught up with the same issues a sense of loneliness, isolation, longing for connection, hunger for power, hunger for control, hunger for decisions, who makes it. A very little tiny little things where you have conversation with someone you love, who said first, who is right, we get caught up. That's the weakness of human being, we get caught up. So, so what it is, I think it's very important that, of course, uh, they are like this beautiful teachings of Shang Jun Yinju. It's clearly one of the most beautiful texts, wisdom knowledge that I know of. I'm not claiming that I know every all the texts, but I think this is one of the most beautiful, most direct, and everything in this text. This is all what it's talking about. 
and most naked explanation, direct explanation. But still, we hear it, we learn it, we're trying to apply it, we go back into our everyday life, we get caught up. People come to the retreat and they feel very good, very connected. A lot of awareness and then the retreat ends, they go back to their car, they open their door, the smells of their samsara. The moment the odor of their samsara hits their nose, senses back into this, that world, back into that world. So I guess this is what we're doing here. It's very much really like a constantly trying to remind ourselves each other. And I, I definitely feel that same thing for myself. I'm not talking to, to all of you. I feel that same thing. One of the things, the gift of being teaching constantly, reminding me of my own practices my own conditions, my own weaknesses. And that, that definitely helps me to be aware more, to, to pay more attention. It's a constant um, practice, basically. So I think uh, in some sense, uh, what I'm trying to say here is this, you know, yes, so according to the, these teachings, what we talked before also, <clears throat> um, eleventh nail, um, so eleventh nail of Shangshun Yinju talks about that all the uh, senses being the door. I, I, I talked before that during the, I think as a first or second lamp. So through all our senses, like my eye, my nose, my ear, my, my body, through, through senses, we can be aware of that light. We can be aware of that innate awareness. Through our inner wake, awakening, we can be aware of that light in appearances of sound, light, rays that we talked about, awakening the visions we talked last time. So, so basically, through our senses, through our awakening of our consciousness, through through, through many doors, basically, through many doors, there is a possibility. Whenever we leave things as they are more, whenever we, inexperientially, whenever we're trying to, able to find more sacred space, any given moment. For example, this very moment when I'm talking to you all, and if you're listening, if you feel a little bit more space, in your body, in your heart, in your mind, in your senses, you perceive more, you process better, do digest better. Maybe if you're open enough, you liberate everything any discomfort occurring this this interaction with me in this very moment but if there is a thoughts coming a judgment mind is coming and they are occupying as a smart ego and you feel you have some intelligence there and that is not an intelligence that is simply a ignorance which even you are not conscious of and probably one can live life, most of the time in life, interfere by that smart ego, 
which keep on eating you up, guiding you to the wrong direction constantly. So, so basically, I think in some sense of that these wisdoms are always there, but it is definitely, uh, there is something very deep, innate ignorance is all the time interfering our life. So I just wanted to maybe just say a few, few things, for example, um, few examples. Let's talk a little bit in a t terms of any community, spiritual community, a sacred community, uh, a healthy family. For example, power and the force. Power, in a some sense, it's good to have if it's if if it's just coming from awakening, if it's coming from that unshakable uh, space, um, infinite uh, possibility, the awareness. If it's coming from that awareness, if it's coming from that indestructible space, there is a naturally there is a power, confidence, a playfulness. There is their quality there. Power is power in a death sense. It's very, very important. We, you all need to, to have that. Fearlessness, confidence. But force, it's a different. Force is never good. And in a way, the force comes out of lack of power. From powerlessness, the force comes out. It sounds similar, but it's very different. Control comes out. Controlling your own body. Controlling your own emotion. Controlling your own pain. Controlling your own idea. Controlling someone. Controlling situation. Controlling community. Controlling whole country trying to control the country, whatever the control is, comes out of force, powerlessness. So in some sense, I think uh, in this deep awakening, a genuine confidence and power arises. And these teaching always, always does not encourage to control and of course it's i'm not talking particularly in terms of the politically or in terms of the uh, you know controlling other people and so on but it is very important that in recognizing the differences so or some sense of like in in the many time uh, people end up using negative speech, pain speech, what I call, pain action of the body, decisions, pain action of the speech, pain action, imagination of mind. And some are more harmful in the society than others. So as a spiritual community sometime, for example, there is a, some sense of very, very simple a spiritual community need to, need to have very much sense of inclusiveness, particularly to the strangers, newcomers, people you don't know. Th these are the people you don't know, people, strangers, people who are different from you. They are the candidate for uh, testing your openness. testing your awareness, testing your weakness, testing your ignorance, because that is place where you, you constantly, it manifests constantly. So it's very, very important that 
to be aware of that, to have that constant awareness that you're not excluding everybody. You have this energy of inclusiveness. I mean, I see this, these things from, from very po powerful politician to spiritual masters to, uh, to the leaders of organizations uh, in many different, very high to many different layers of positions. There is some sense of exclusiveness, inclusiveness becoming a problem. No matter how much good they talk, but when it comes to their personal thing, territorial thing, they'll begin to lose it once again. When it's not a personal thing, when it's something very general, it's very easy to give the advice, it's easy to reflect on that idea, easy to discuss. When it becomes a personal, then very difficult. So I think that's very, very important to, 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 to be conscious of. Practices such as like awareness of silence and awareness of awareness of silence and awareness of actions, for example. Very often, I think it's a good to be a little bit more silent sight than talkative sight. Whenever you are more silent, you are more reflecting. What you're, you're more aware of what you're feeling. You're more aware of what you're saying. You're more aware of what you intend to say. You're more aware of consequences of what you're saying. The silence helps that. When there is no inner silence there, it's driven by fear and emotions. And what comes out of judgmental ideas about other religion, other groups, other people, then, then it is not good. You see, not, it's not only not good for you, but what you just said becomes an issue for many people, particularly in the position of powers. So I think some sense of there is more sense of awareness is necessary in the people in the position in the power. And also sometime and uh, I think it's a, it's a true probably to everybody, every individual, particularly every practitioner, and also particularly as a spiritual community, a, f a, a good family. Uh, it's, it's very, very important that, you know, when, whenever uh, working with each other, when we, whenever we are trying to be open to each other, whenever we are trying to be sensitive to each other, when we are ever trying to be aware of each other's need, uh, whenever we are trying to be aware of each other's pain, and uh, whenever we are trying to resolve something, being sensitive and trying to resolve something, I think this is a very important in a sense that, sorry, the internet, internet is, uh, again, it's a little bit, it, I'm not at my home, uh, so uh, it's not working well in this little hotel. This is the door of the bathroom, so I'm trying to sit there. Natural window is there, <laughs> there, but the connection here is not very good. But anyway, so so what I'm trying to say, what I'm trying to say here is the result, process, and the result. So whenever we are trying to work with each other, we are not wasting our time. It is a result. What I'm trying to so whenever we are trying to work with each other, when we are, when we are, whenever we are talk, sitting with each other, we are talking to each other, is a, is a result. 
is a, a success. It's not always what is the outcome. The process is a result. Reflection is a result. Being aware of somebody is a result. So, so, so it's good to not to think about result is something that you achieve afterward. Because when you think that way, that is the place where the, the innate ignorance is again manifesting. What is the result? The ultimate result is nothing than awaken. Awakening, process of awakening, is also some sense of result. Self-reflection is a result. When you're aware something is not working, is a result. Don't feel bad when you're aware something is not working and trying to hope for something which is not there and feel bad again. There are people who do that, but that's not a good, good approach. Be happy when you're aware of something did not work. There are a lot of people that are not even conscious of that. Be happy. A recognition of ignorance. Be happy. In the Dzogchen teaching it says, even those who doubt me, referring to the innate awareness, they are lucky because they are closer to me than many other people. So, so there's no, I think maybe there's not nothing really specific thing about, and I've been talking so much about the, the three door the inner refuge, the awareness, and I think all those things are, it's particularly uh, connected with uh, this this third third lamb, uh, the wisdom of awareness. So wisdom of awareness is basically nothing than uh, knowing yourself, who truly you are. And knowing yourself who truly you are will help more when you know, begin to recognize more and more who you are not and how you are trapped in them. And so that is the process that I'm talking about. More and more and more knowing that is very, very important. So um, thank you very much. And uh, I think, um, let's see. The next, uh, our Facebook live will be um, April 18th with the last lamp. The empty nature of the base removes the darkness of the bias. So I will talk about the empty nature of the base and how it is directly connected with a, uh, a sense of uh, divisions separations, bias, isolations, exclusions, and all these aspects, what I think anywhere from individual to collective society to one's own spiritual practices, the realization of empty base, it's very, very important uh, in order to awaken these bias conditions. So, uh, well, I think that's all for today. And since also the internet is not working that well, a few interruptions there. So, uh, so next week I'll be back home. Internet will be better. So thank you. All my love, blessings. Hi, good morning everybody. So I just wanted to start this morning with a, a short meditation first and then I will start to teach.
Okay, so sorry about that, that little music. Um, I just wanted to do this uh, uh, continuation of the third lamp. Uh, there was a uh, quite few interruptions with the internet and uh, and it was not did not run well through so uh, and also I think um, uh, every now and then it's a uh, good to able to do this uh, a 10 minute uh, short meditation together uh, listening and singing and feeling the salivu mantra, uh, the mantra of great perfection, mantra of nature of mind. Um, so I think it's a, it's a ways of, uh, for all of us to uh, come together, um, feel connected, and, f and feel supported by each other. So, uh, and then, then we just uh, uh, move on in our life, whatever we are doing that whatever you are doing, then hopefully this helps a little bit, that kind of charging up, clearing something. So I think uh, it feels like it's a good thing to do. So, so this is a little bit like a continuation of the third lamp. Uh, so I wanted to just to, this uh, again, this is the Shang Yun Yu text I'm hold, always holding in my hand here. Uh, Kundu Zambo Marik Mimba Sela Chantalo Kundu Zambo Marik Mimba Sela Chantalo Kundu Zambo Marik Mimba Sela Chantalo So this is the um, chapter, uh, the nail 11th. So it's basically saying I pay homage to Kundu Zambo who clears the darkness, darkness of uh, ignorance or any form of darkness. So this is a uh, uh, always it's a good to, uh, these praises are, in the beginning it's good to uh, pray, feel, connect, reflect, um, and also like a wish that we are, as a humanity, we are all so many different spiritual traditions, so many different philosophy, therapy, healing systems, but at the end of the day, I think all are trying to discover our true nature, our highest self, our and live as much as possible from that higher self and engage with the world as much as possible from that pure open place. That's what we are, I think, every cross-culture tradition, spiritual tradition, we're all trying to do the same thing. So, so this is the homage. And um, so, so now, as far as Rangri uh, Ishi Dhamma Yi, the lamp of the the awareness, wisdom of awareness, basically, lamp of the wisdom of awareness is referring to the awareness that can happen in oneself that is in us. is is a question about if we uh, recognize it or not, but that awareness is it's there. So. Um, so basically, that awareness is in all of us, but it's the it's biggest question is how to awaken the light within. So how to uh, awaken that light within. So this is, I think, a little bit what I'm going to talk. And this is what I was trying to talk last time, is that so many things that interferes our life, our thoughts, our emotions, our view, our personalities, uh, because the lifestyle that we live, the stress, tensions, deadline, uh, health crisis, financial crisis, relationship challenges, all these challenges that we live in the world, that it makes it really hard to a sense of awakening that inner light very difficult, very, very difficult. Uh, uh, some people acknowledge that, challenges, some people ignores that, some people pretend to be not having that, but there's no one single person that I know on this earth 
that who don't have challenges. So we all have, some, some have more than others, but we all have that. So now question is, is the method. How do actually we awaken that inner light? How do we ignite that inner light within ourselves? That is the, the biggest question and biggest question of the day today, what I'm trying to discuss here. So one of those very simple, simple approach will be, it really is about resting. And in a Dzogchen uh, tradition, the tradition of great perfection, it talks a lot about being, letting go, resting, abiding, clearing, purifying, uh, overcoming effort, transcending effort. These are, these are very commonly taught and explained and emphasized in these teachings. So in a practically speaking, in our everyday life, in my life right now, in your life right now, how are we going to do that? Well, we have to remember to do that. You know, even though my morning was a little busy today, I, I got up early, I went to the gym, I spent an hour and a half, come back here, have breakfast at home, and also getting ready to go to the airport. Uh, and, uh, but somehow, middle of all those things, I need to define some sense of my peace. I need to define some sense of my resting moments, connecting moments. I need to, to do what I need to, to do, like my Facebook Live, talking, trying to talk to all of you. It's something that I cannot just let go and uh, something whatever is important in life, we need to, to able to engage with a sense of peace, what I'm trying to say. So, so as a method, there's a three things that I will talk. We, I can say first in Tibetan, Lu Ngalso, the resting of the body. Ngak Ngalso, the resting of the speech. Sem Ngalso, the resting of the mind. So think about Three restings. Just wanted to clarify something. Resting always does not mean disengaging with world, disengaging with job, disengaging with your creativity, disengaging, running away from relationship, running away from pain, challenges. No, it's not saying anything like that. Of course, if it's a, if it's necessary. You need to do, you need to run away for a period of time. End of the day, it's not about running away from the life, from the world, from people, from, from society, from, from your commitments, your responsibility, social engagements. It's not about running away from it. It's about getting rest enough to engage more better properly, so that you're engaging with the world from the highest place of yourself, the most open place, most unconditioned place, less expectation place for less expectations, place of more flexibility, place of acceptance, place of understanding of others and others' pain, others' need. That is engagement, of course we need to do. In the end, we need to, to engage, not run away. So, so these three restings are most important. So let's talk about a little like a pra in a practical sense, right? This very moment in your life, in my life. Just pause for a moment. Breathe deep. and continuously breathe deep.
I'm not going to stop talking because I am doing a Facebook live. So I am I'm engaged here, I'm teaching it. So I'm not going to stop saying, oh, I'm going to rest my body and my speech and my mind, particularly my speech. I'm not going to do that, right? Then all you will think what happened. But I can be more aware of my body like this moment. I can be more aware of my breath, like this moment. I can breathe deeper and still continuously engage and speak, like this moment. I can be aware of my silence and still speak, like this moment. If I need to, to remain a little longer in silence before I speak next sentence, I can and I should and I am doing it right now so that I feel more closer to my silence. So I feel that I am speaking from that place of silence. So these three very important place, remembering these three very important place, resting in the stillness of the body, resting in, the, in your body, being aware of your body. Let the awareness bring that light in your body and that light is the healing light. Wherever that light of that awareness touches any part of your body, any organ in your body, any cell in your body, it's going to make differences. It's going to help heal, recover, restore, So in this moment, I want all of you, that nothing doing much particular any different, but to be aware of your body. The moment you are aware of your body, the awareness is a light that ignites in your body and bo your body is receiving those lights. You are connected. You are connected to your body you're aware of your body. The awareness, light of awareness is in your body. Your body is awakened, illuminated this moment. Another word we can say, Rung also, means just resting deep in your body. Maybe some of you might be thinking that, oh yeah, I, I love that idea of resting deep. I like to take a few days off. I wanted to go to the mountain. I wanted to go to the ocean. Pe people who are in the mountain, they wanted to go to the ocean. People who are in the ocean, they go up into the mountain. People in the city, they wanted to go to the countryside. People who are in the countryside, they want to go to the city to do what? To rest, to relax, to enjoy. 
I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about it does not have to be like that. You have to try not going somewhere, not changing anything, finding where you are in you. But if it's absolutely necessary, that last resources option is there. You need it because you cannot, you cannot connect. So you need to go away, then you need to go away. It's called path of renunciation. As we say, pang lam, pang lam, path of renouncing something, you have to renounce if it's necessary. But you don't know it's necessary or not unless you try. So like this very moment, whatever, wherever you are, whatever you're doing, you can experiment that. Let's be a little bit more aware of your speech. That means first be aware of your silence. Feel the silence around you. Listen to them, feel them connect to them, enjoy. Feel the silence within you, in you, and breathe it out deep if there's anything discomforting you. Now you are in a different place. You are resting in the speech. You are resting in that silence. You are allowing to rest your speech, resting in that silence, accessing your inner awareness, the inner light, the light of awareness. If you are, why you are able to now? Because you rested your body. You are allowed to rest your body. You are allowed to rest your speech. That's why you are accessing that light through silence. And silence is not only absence of noise. The silence can discover even in the presence of noises. Now, just be aware of your heart, you're aware of your mind. Just the sense of spaciousness, sense of openness, the unbounded nature of mind, like a being a endless sky, clear sky. The sense of self, a sense of being, it's a little bit more 
wider than feeling very isolated, limited, condition, blocked, stopped, lack of freedom. Not like that, the opposite. Now, if you look, we just, as I'm speaking slowly and we, what we're trying to, uh, you all are trying to listen and reflect and abide, rest, we are able to do that, right? I think we are able to do it quite well. I don't have to skip this Facebook Live. I don't have to stop talking. I don't have to stop engaging with all of you. I'm quite okay with maintaining some sense of awareness and continuously talking, which trying to make some sense of what I'm trying to talk. I think, I think, so that, that's the idea of resting. Of course, it does not mean the formal resting, formal deep meditation is important. There are masters who are going up into the caves and the mountains and resting for years. Definitely, that's one option. But in our all ordinary life, we're all busy doing a lot of things. This is one option we have. So let's talk about a little bit about the opposite side. What I was trying to talk last time when the internet was not working really well is the opposite side is a little bit about uh, um, the urge, urgency, the urge of expressing through pain body, pain speech and pain mind. I went to one time in a prison and uh, it's a maximum crime prison to teach meditation there. And, uh, and the, when you see these people, it, it doesn't feel like anybody would do, kill somebody or something like that. But they have. And, uh, and you think about how that could have happened because probably it takes just a second, a minute to happen a rage, anger, which cannot be controlled. And actions taking place. For sure, that person is not aware of that action. They regret. But that action happened. There was some sense of urgency to take action from that rage of anger. And so, uh, some of these people are not very, seems not very educated, very difficult f background of families, upbringings. But this urge, negative urge, is doesn't happen only to that, it happens to all kinds of level of people. This kind of urge happens to, in a higher level of politicians, even higher level of spiritual masters. Anybody who is holding some sense of position of power, this urge is still there also. And particularly people in the position of power, that's very important to watch more carefully their own, our own pain, body, speech and mind, particularly people who are influential in the position of power, they have to be very careful about their speech because their one speech, a pain speech, can affect so many people under them, people who follow them, believe in them. They're very, very important. So it, it's absolutely it's important to be aware of what you're saying before you say something 
as, as uh, in those positions. And people do do a lot of mistakes like that, saying some things they never thought carefully. They never thought of what consequences of that speech A social problems that it can create among people. If they are fully aware of that, they would never say that. But they said that that moment they felt urge to say that, a urge, urgency of pain, urgency of fear, urgency from loss of connection to the source. And they said something, and that's it. Something you said, then it's hard to take back, then it messes up everything. And in a society, in a community, for us, it's very important to be aware of each other. One of the, uh, particularly in a spiritual community, one thing is very important to be aware of each other. Each other's feeling, each other's need, each, each other's pain, each other's challenges and be trying to be available those moments for each other. Because how you can be, be with each other if you are not aware of that, these moments. So, in some sense of this Basically, the urgency of pain, fear, ego, expectations from other people does messes up people's life. Not, not only it doesn't allow us to connect it to the inner light, but even it takes away the simple peace of life because of your own action because of your own speech, because of on, on your minds, the way you see things or think, and where you dis make decisions in your life. They mess us up when they come from this pain, fear, disconnected, not restful, open, So, anyway, what I'm trying to say here is, I'm trying to talk, I'll talk about the same thing, about the, the lamp of aware, wisdom of awareness, wisdom awareness, the light, inner light that I'm talking about. I'm talking about accessing that inner light. There's more challenges that we have in order to access that light. It's good to talk, think, trying to find a way to change those challenges those urgencies, actions of actions we take through our body. Like, like eating disorders, for example. You know, it's hard, right? Easy to think about not to eat when there's no food around you. And when you have a full lengthy menu in front of you, it's hard to not to eat. So no eating turn into a big eating. And why? The curving for calories. Needing that those calories. Carb carb carbs. So same thing in our life, we, 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 it's very hard to rest when the pain body is very active, when the pain speech is hard to not criticize, judge, say wrong things, mess up relationship with your speech, when the pain mind is very active. It's very hard to make, wrong, hard to make a good decision and end up making a lot of wrong decision when mind is not fully rested and too active of pain mind. 
So when these three doors are not resting enough, the access to inner light, it's far away. One can talk about it, think about it, but it's far away. So for most of us, I mean, simple solution for idea of accessing to the inner light, first of all, rest more through this body, through the speech, through mind, or be more aware of through the, those resting qualities, even the body, speech, and mind in action. Being more aware with more like a pure awareness, if it's possible, at least self-reflect the consequences of these actions of pain, body, speech, and mind in your life, in your family's life, in your relationship, in your business, in this large in society, depends on what kind of position and power that you have, that how you can impact others. There, all of those involved responsibility there. We are human beings, we do mistakes. But we don't want you to do mistake one after another. I think in some sense, probably all of, everybody's allowed, in a way, to do a, do a mistake as a human being. But maybe you're not really allowed to do twice the same mistake. So, yeah, so, so I think that's all. As I said, I can go on and on, but uh, I need you to... Uh, get ready and go to the airport. So uh, I hope this uh, internet did not interrupt it. Was a little bit uh, uh, helpful. Uh, and so I will continue with the next week. Thank you so much. All my love and blessings to all of you.